SkyTrack is an incredibly powerful launch monitor at a fraction of the cost compared to TrackMan and some of the other big names. But the Garmin R10 is even cheaper. How do they compare? We're going to find out in today's video. All right, we're going to think I think kicked off here with the pitching wedge. Right out of the gate, you're going to see SkyTrack missing further to the right than Garmin. Garmin pretty much down the center line, SkyTrack to the right. And that's going to be because of side spin. That's going to be an emerging theme as we go through this. SkyTrack's going to pick up a lot more side spin and consistently to the right, which is typically what I do have uh, compared to Garmin. It will be a lot less side spin and sometimes even in the opposite direction. So after each shot with each iron, I'm going to pause on the data just for a few seconds so you can kind of soak it in and uh, come up with your own conclusions. But we are going to take a look at the averages and the data as a whole at the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Another comparison that we're kind of inadvertently doing here is comparing iOS to what E6 looks like on a computer. So you see the E6 software on a computer running it at 1080p on the left-hand side versus iOS on the right-hand side. So you can do a little bit of a graphical comparison while we're at it. So the seven iron results here that you're going to see in a second are a bit peculiar. And that's because there's a discrepancy in the carry distance between SkyTrack and the R10 for the first time. And what I mean for the first time, I mean more than a, a yard or two. So we have 153.1 yards for SkyTrack carry, 141.2 yards carrying for the R10, which is almost 12 yards off. But the reason this is so strange is all the major metrics, launch angle, ball speed, pack spin, even side spin was really, really close on this. And the direction was pretty close too. So all the major metrics read the same, and yet there was this discrepancy of almost 12 yards uh, with E6's output. And I can't figure that out. So if you have any ideas why this may have happened on this shot, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts because this is a puzzle to me. just a horrendous shot here but leaving it in the data set so you can still see this comparison even though it was a terrible swing and sky track and garmin pretty similar on this once again so you can see very similar numbers Okay, so let's take a quick look at the data. I've taken and put it in a chart, and in the columns that says difference is the difference between obviously the R10 and the SkyTrack, and at the bottom, there is an average of the differences. And just a quick glance at those averages show that there's very little difference between the Garmin and the SkyTrack except in one area, and that's in side spin. So when carry difference, they're pretty much the same. There are a couple outliers that throw off that average, but they were very close. The launch difference was incredibly accurate, almost identical. The difference between ball speeds, very similar. The Garmin tended to show slightly lower ball speeds, but again, it was the difference was minimal. The backspin, also an average difference of just 115 RPMs, that's almost nothing. But then the big drastic difference was in side spin. There was a difference of 
almost 700 RPM in different directions. So sometimes the Garmin said there was slight side spin to the left when the Skytrack registered it to the right. And often they both said to the right, but Garmin was much, much less. And this would explain why the Garmin typically put shots to the left of what Skytrack did. So if you're looking at the visual ball tracking, typically Garmin was shooting the ball off of way further to the left. And that's because the draw spin that the Skytrack was picking up wasn't being picked up by the Garmin. And that is typically my shot. I do have draw spin on it and side spin to the right. So I, Skytrack's definitely being more accurate in that area. But the rest, the numbers look great. So when should you go with Skytrack and when should you consider moving to the Garmin? Well, definitely go with Skytrack if space in your simulator space is an issue. And if you're planning on playing indoors, Skytrack's going to be the better option. You're not limited to special balls. And I should say for this test, I did use the Titleist RCT balls, which are designed to help pick up the spin rate and Garmin's a lot more effective when you use that. And that ball was being used for this test. I never actually said that during the video, but I did use that ball. The Garmin, however, is significantly cheaper, so if you're on a budget, you're probably going to want to take a look at it. Also, if portability is important to you, I mean, the Skytrack's portable, but the Garmin is uber portable, right? It's so small, it can fit in your golf bag, you can take it to the driving range. So if that's important to you and you're going to be using it outdoors, I would probably look at the Garmin. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison, and if you did, if you would consider hitting that subscribe button and just joining this community and being part of this, it would be great. I really appreciate it. It kind of motivates you to keep going. It's a lot of work to put these things together it's a bit of a grind so when you hit that subscribe button it goes a long way to keeping the channel going thank you you are appreciated and we'll see you next time on golf quest